Welcome! Today we're diving into SOC planning and the possibilities of creating master data. Let's get started and unlock the secrets to efficient data management. Hello everyone! Welcome to another episode of McCoy TV. Today we're diving into SOC planning. I'm Catherine and I'll be taking you through a topic we frequently encounter with many of our clients. Imagine this. You're working on workforce planning and a new employee will be hired. Great! But that person isn't in success factors yet and therefore not in stock either. Still, you need that employee for your planning because he or she is crucial. Or picture another scenario. An acquisition is coming up. Exciting! But the new company code hasn't been created in SAP yet. So how do you ensure the revenue and costs from these acquisitions are included in your strategic plan? No worries, because in the next few minutes, we'll show you how easy it is to create missing master data and SOC planning. Our expert, Gas van Dongen, will guide you through a practical demo. Enjoy watching and good luck with SOC planning. Thank you, Katrin. I'm Gas, part of the business planning team here at McCoy. And today I'm going to show you a demo where we'll create new master data for workforce planning in SAP Analytics Cloud, also known as SAC. To walk you through this, we'll be using a case from a hypothetical company, LTOP. LTOP is a small company that sells tablets and laptops. In the Netherlands and the UK, we'll be part of their HR team, getting ready for their quarterly workforce planning cycle, where we plan the workforce for the year ahead. Here's the human resources dashboard we'll be working with. We plan at an individual employee level because at LTOP, every employee matters. We plan each employee in the organization by business unit, division, contract type, job grade, and country. This happens on a month by month basis. For those of you new to SAC, don't worry. This dashboard makes it easy to visualize the data. On the left side, we have our actuals and on the right, the rolling forecast planning data. Everything is presented in FTE, full-time equivalent. As we can see here, we are planning for the LTOP EU business unit, specifically in marketing. One of our contractors, Sarah Bond, is leaving at the end of September. We've already had a successful second interview with Wouter, who seems like a great fit to replace her. However, he is not yet added in success factors. Normally, we would use the built-in SAC feature Add Member to manually add Wouter by right-clicking on the table. But there are some limitations. We are restricted to the available dimension data in the table, no help with the properties of the dimension, and we have to adjust the FTE manually. To solve this, we've developed a custom feature that allows us to create new master data, which can be used across different dimensions seamlessly no more manual mistakes, and it's much more efficient. Before we dive in and show you how we can use this new feature, we'll look at the employee dimension behind the planning table. As you can see, Wouter hasn't been added yet. Let's fix that. Let's go back to our workforce planning tool and create him as a new employee. First, I'll enter Wouter's name. I need to enter the correct ID. To get this, we can follow the employee naming convention, which we can access through the menu on the right. This brings us to the Excel file on the SharePoint, ensuring all created IDs are unique and consistent. As we can see here, we need to enter 0030 as the ID. Next, we need to set the start date. Since Sarah's job ends in September, we assume Wouter will start on the 1st of October. We'll leave the end date blank and the system will automatically calculate it based on the end of the planning cycle. Now it's time to input the supervisory organization details, which are important for the company's hierarchy. Under the vision, I'll select the appropriate one for Wouter. Next up is the job information. This is key for financial data. These drop-down lists contain all the possible options. For example, under job grade, we can see all possibilities. During the hiring process, we agreed that Wouter would work at 90% capacity. So we'll enter that here as 0.9 FTE. 
Once everything is filled in, we hit OK, which triggers a back-end data action, processing all the information we just entered. At the bottom of the screen, we get a confirmation that the new member has been added successfully. You'll notice the yellow data line, indicating that the new data has been entered into the system. The table now reflects our assumption that Wouter will start in October. After refreshing the data model page, we can see Wouter is officially added to the employee dimension. And the added member marker helps us quickly identify manually added employees. This marker is really helpful. Once Wouter is added in SuccessFactors, we can easily remove this temporary entry. Plus, we can see the difference between the standard SAC added members, which are created to the, uh, our custom future, and SAC itself, where our button was quickly able to add more data, provide assistance during entering data, and add reassurance to data quality. That's how we create new master data in SAC, ensuring our workforce planning runs smoothly. Thanks for watching McCoy TV. We hope you picked up some new insights. For more on planning, check out our video on workforce planning in SAC, where Matthijs van Kote and Joris Tuin dive deeper into the subject. Don't forget to follow us for the next episode. See you soon!